Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some practice problems involving conservation of energy. So I already covered what the different kinds of energy are in a different video. So now we're just going to be looking at some practice problems for this topic. So the first one I have here today is I have a ramp and a spring launching a box up the ramp. So originally this box is fully compressed from a distance of 1.1 meters from its rest length. I'm going to say it has a spring constant of 500 newtons per meter and this box is going to have a mass of two kilograms. And my question is, after we launch this thing and it's gonna go up this ramp and eventually it's gonna you know, go in the air, my question is, what is its peak height going to be? So here's how we solve this one. First I have to say what my two points are. I would say point one is here when the spring is fully compressed and point two is here when it's at the peak height, whatever that is. Keep in mind that energy is conserved here. The reason why, there's no friction, there's no other forces like pushing or pulling forces that would cause my energy to not be conserved. So now I've got to figure out what kind of energy do I have at each point. At point one, I definitely have spring potential energy. I call it US. Is this box moving at the beginning? No, it's not moving when it's fully compressed. And then I would also say there's no gravitational potential energy either. That's because we're on the ground, so the only kind of energy we have here is U sub s. Then at point two, we definitely have gravitational potential energy, Ug, and that's because we're clearly a height above the ground. I think it's also evident that there's no spring here, so there's no spring potential energy. So the question is, is there kinetic energy? And the answer is no, because at the peak height, your velocity is zero at the peak height specifically. For that reason, it's only gravitational potential energy at point two, and with that, I can go to my equation, which says E total initial is equal to the E total final. At E total initial, that's only spring potential energy, that's gonna be one half K X squared. At the final, it's all gravitational potential energy, so it's MGH. And then from here, I just gotta plug in my variables. The K is 500, x is 1.1 and that's squared and then that's going to equal the mass which we said was 2 times 9.8 times the height. If I plug in the left side on my calculator I get 302.5 and on the right side I get 19.6 h and so then my final answer is height equals 15.4 meters. That's how high it goes in the air. And that's it for the first one just as a quick reminder you just have to pick two points one and two say what kind of energy we have at each point, and then set them equal to each other. Very simple. Let's look at a couple more examples. So for the next one here, I'm going to have this kind of roller coaster looking shape. I have a box at the top, which is initially at rest. It's gonna go down the hill, eventually getting to the bottom, which that distance is a distance of 20 meters below. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna come back up this hill reaching a final position here, which is, let's say, nine meters above the ground. So we go down 20 meters, and then we come back up nine meters. And my question is gonna be, what is the velocity at that point right there? And unfortunately for us, I am not giving you the mass. So then how are we gonna solve this problem? First, I gotta pick my two points. My first point's obviously the beginning at point one, and point two is at the end when it goes back up the nine meters. So even though I would say that at the bottom, at the 20 meters below the starting point, that is gonna be the fastest position when it has the highest kinetic energy because all the gravitational potential energy got converted to kinetic energy, I don't care about this middle position at all. I can ignore it. The only point I care about is the final and the initial, and I don't care about anything else. At the initial position, there is definitely gravitational potential energy, UG, that's because we have a height above the ground, and since we're at rest, there is no kinetic energy, so that's it for point one. At point two, I would say that we have gravitational potential energy again, because we have nine meters above the ground, but we're also gonna have some kinetic energy, and that's because we definitely have some velocity here. So now when I plug in my formula for E total one equals E total two, I'm gonna say at point one, it's MGH one, and then at point two, I'm gonna say MGH two plus one half MV squared. 
So then for the first one, the mass I don't know, but actually mass cancels out because it shows up in all three terms. That's nice. G does not cancel out even though it shows up here and here. It does not show up here, so G does not cancel out. So that's just gonna be 9.8 times the height one, which is 20, equals, again, 9.8 times height two, which is nine, plus one half velocity squared. And now we're solving for velocity. So on the left side, let me plug this in my calculator. I got 196, and then on the right side, I'm getting 88.2 plus one half V squared. From here, it's just the algebra part. This part's easy. Subtract 88.2 from both sides, and I'll get 107.8 equals one half V squared. Instead of dividing by one half, it makes way more sense to multiply two on both sides. So that's gonna be 215.6 equals V squared. And then I gotta take the square root of this, and that'll be my answer. So the square root of 215.6 gives me 14.7, and that is the speed in meters per second, 14.7. And so that's it for the second problem. Now we just got one more today, and of course it is the hardest one. So this one's gonna be another roller coaster type shape, but at the bottom we have a loop. So let's say at the top this roller coaster is heading down the hill already with a speed of five meters per second. This hill is going to be a grand total of 30 meters high, and now looking at the loop-de-loop, -loop, I'm gonna say the radius of that loop is five meters if we consider it to be a perfect circle, which in reality it would not be, but we can just assume for this problem. And my question is gonna be, when this roller coaster goes down the hill and when we're at the top position of the loop, I wanna know what the speed is at that point right there. So here's what we're gonna to do to solve. First, point one, the top, point two, top of the hill. Very simple. Again, for all of these problems, energy is conserved, which is why I get to use E total initial equals E total final in the first place. If you wanna know what we do when energy is not conserved, I cover that in a different video. Check that one out. So before I solve this problem, why don't you pause the video and try it on your own first and then unpause it when you wanna see the solution. So the first thing I gotta do is I gotta decide what kind of energy is at each point. At point one, I definitely have gravitational energy but I also have kinetic energy, and that's because I'm moving with some velocity, five meters per second. Then at point two, I'm gonna say I have the exact same thing. I have some height. I don't know what that height is yet, but I have some height. And I also have kinetic energy because we're moving. So now, at point one, UG is just gonna be MGH1, height one, plus one half MV squared, and that's velocity one. It's the five meters per second, okay? and then equals to the right side, that's gonna be the gravitational energy, MGH2, plus its kinetic energy, one half MV2 squared. And believe it or not, we know all of these values except for two. We don't know V2, the velocity at the end, and we do not know the mass either, but the good news about the mass is that it cancels out just like the last problem. This happens a lot. It won't happen when you have a spring involved. Luckily, we don't have a spring, so it just cancels. So G is 9.8, height one is 30, that part's easy, plus one half V1 squared, that's gonna be five squared. Again, very simple. Now on the right side, this G is 9.8, but this height, I know it, do you know it? Well, I would say that if you consider this radius to be five, that means this distance is five meters and this distance is five meters, meaning your total height is gonna be five plus five, so 10 meters at the top of the loop. That's what you're supposed to do there. So then if I plug in 10 right here, and then plus one half V2 squared, I have everything I need to solve for V2. I'm gonna plug in the left side in my calculator first. So I'm gonna get 306.5 for that one. And then on the right side, that's gonna be 98 plus one half V2 squared. Subtract 98 from both sides, that's gonna give me two 8.5 equals one half V2 squared. And then I just gotta multiply both sides by two. So that's 417 equals V2 squared. Finally, we take the square root of both sides and it looks like my velocity at the final position is gonna be 20.4 and that's meters per second. 
And there we go. There's some very fun practice problems for us. So hopefully that all made sense. If not, please comment below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.